Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be doing a little bit of painting. Today, I thought we'd paint my spider pot. I rescued this off of a neighbor who was moving a house to want it anymore. And I'm very glad I did, because I love house pots. I'm starting to get a few too many, but just gonna stop buying them. I feel like spider plants are a great house plant for beginners as well. They're really easy to take care of. They survive pretty much anything. Just water them about once a week. And they're happy. So I'm just gonna stick this one back here. Trying to arrange it somewhat nicely to be painted. <laughs> so let me show you what I've got on hand. First of all, important for any painting. I've got my jar. So today I'm going to be using acrylic paint. So, I've got water. However, if you're painting with oil paint, you'd have white spirit or turpentine. But today I thought I'm just recovering from a slight illness and I don't want to have the smell of white spirit all in my nose. <laughs> This one you might be able to see it's a bit more wiry. This one is five centimeters. This one is two point five. It's an inch. And then I have my palette knife. So this is really good for if you want to make an interesting texture while you're painting. Or what I'm going to use it for. It's good for mixing paint. Because this way you can just sort of mix all the paint together without any of it getting lost in the brush. So you've got no waste. As you can see, mine's a little bit dirty. It's had a lot of views. Then for a palette, I'm using this. This is actually just like a clear sheet of plastic that I think I got with an order once in the package. And I just thought it'd be handy. I paint a fair bit and I just never manage to keep track of a palette. <laughs> I end up painting on whatever surface I can find. You can see this is folded in half. The inside of it. It's already completely coated. 
so I'm going to use clean edge. And last, but not least, I've got my paint. Today I'm going to be using Winsor Newton acrylic paint. Now I find I find that acrylic paint is a little bit more difficult to use than oil paint because, well, each other pros and cons, but you can't blend acrylic paint as well because it dries really quickly. So you need to mix the shades more accurately so that you can sort of do the blending yourself. Whereas with oil paints, they stay wet on the canvas for a really long time, so you can just put more paint on there, mix it in. However, oil paints are messy, and they need white spirit. I forgot what it was called for a second there. They need white spirit instead of water, which stinks, unfortunately. <laughs> and also, it makes it very difficult to get off of anything if you spill it or whatever, if you get some paint on your clothes, you gotta wash off with the white spirit and then you smell all day. It's a whole ordeal. However, I think oil paint has a slightly nicer look at the end. It looks, I mean, acrylic paint looks a little bit plasticky, which makes sense since it's acrylic. It's the same thing that my nails are made out of. However, it's always quite bright and vibrant, which I do like. So, I don't need to prime my canvas. Because I bought this one pre-primed. That's why it's white already. And I'm going to start my background with some white paint. This one is titanium white. They always sell them in enormous tops, because you always need the most one. <laughs> I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this yellow ochre. Just to make a sort of creamy colour for the background. Mimic my walls, <laughs> which are a very boring cream. I'm going to use this really grubby paint rag to open it because it's stuck. This is the thing with acrylic paint, it hardens and it sticks shut. Okay. So I'm just going to squeeze a little bit of that out. Put it back on so it doesn't dry out. And squeeze a bit of this out as well. Shake it to get to the bottom. I always find this really satisfying. The paint that's dried around the lid. Look at that. So I'm just going to pour a little bit out. use my palette knife just to mix them together and I'll show you. Here I have my plastic palette, my knife, and my two colors of paint. And I'm just gonna start by mixing these ever so gently together. Now 
No, I actually want it to stay very slightly streaky. I don't want one completely uniform colour. So I just won't mix it the whole way. So I really like something like this. Okay, I'm gonna go in with my inch wide brush and this paint that I've just mixed. Just wipe that all over. That's much more yellow. It's great. I like the streaks it makes. We can't forget the sign. I'm just doing this to get rid of any of those brush strokes. So we have a nice smooth texture. Just like that. And I am gonna paint the underside there and the bits covered by the clip. I'm going to do that afterwards, since this paint is really easy to recreate. So now, I need to wash this. I'm just going to use my jar. And just... Look at that. Just tapping the brush against the bottom of the jar. Just really squeeze out all of the paint that is in there. Now it's always good to start with a light colour because you see how the water is now this colour. If you start with black and you use the water to water down any of your paint, you're going to get dull colours near the end. So now I'm just going to wait for this to dry, and since it's acrylic, it shouldn't take long. In the meantime, I'm going to wash off my palette knife with my super grubby towel. <laughs> this was once a completely white detail. However, I found when you're painting, it's really handy to have some kind of rag that you can use just to, if you're oil painting, wipe stuff off that you didn't want there or anything you get in your hands or just to sort of clean your brushes on a little bit especially if you're using acrylic paint and then you can use it to get the water off after you've cleaned them so that your paint isn't runny for the next go so, while I'm waiting for this to dry, it's still just a little tiny bit wet I'm going to 
just sketch on a sort of rough idea of what I can see when I'm gonna paint. For that I'm using this very little round brush. Now this one's quite stiff, which I think I like for this sort of thing, since I'm not doing detail right now. I'm just gonna sketch really roughly, and then I'll later paint over it anyway. So let's start with the pot. Very roughly, that's what I can see from here. And I'm just using a sort of light brown for this. And I do the plant. I feel like this thing has got about a million layers. <laughs> Just trying to understand where some of these come from. Now that's super rough. But that's sort of all the leaves that I can see. I think that's just gonna make it easier for me when I'm doing the actual colours and the details to figure out the proportions. So I'm gonna start with the pot since that's underneath all the leaves. And for that, I'm gonna use this Winds of Blue. 
curtains. It's very dark in here, so you can't quite see it, but this pop is a lovely shade of blue. And again, I can't open it. And since it's quite a dark blue, I'm going to mix myself a dark shade using pretty much every colour I've got, so it should make some very dark brown. Now, I prefer to do this always over using black, because very rarely in real life do we see something that is really stark black, and it's just a way to make all your colours a bit more vibrant and give them a bit more depth without dulling them at all. So I'm going to mix my black. I'm going to use red, blue, or yellow. And once again, I'm going to use my palette knife. And immediately, let me show you how this looks. So the colour that I've ended up with is something like that. So, as you can see, you can still see a little bit of the red that's mixed in, some of the blue. But it's very dark, and it can be a little bit more blue than usual, since that's the colour the pot's going to be. For that, I want to use a mid-sized brush. I'm going to use this one, another round brush. It's a little bit frayed from a lot of wear, but it does the job. So I'm going to go in with a mixture of blue and that dark colour, and just put it straight onto the pot. Now I am going to leave space where there are leaves, just to help me when it comes to painting them. I'm dipping into my water just a little bit, so that I get nice clean lines. doing the bottom line, just so that I can make sure it matches up. And it's relatively straight. I'm doing the back line as well. Ok, 
Okay. So, I've kept a tiny bit of the leaves in there, <laughs> just to help myself. Now, let's do a little bit of shading on here, add some shadows and highlights, just to give it some depth, so it's not just a block on the page. I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. Very thin one, like that. I'm going to use my darker colour without any blue mixed in for the shadows. So there's a sort of lip at the top here. I just want to accentuate. There's a shadow right in the middle of the curve. Yeah. It's just wet enough for me to soften the edges a bit, which is good. I'm going to use a tiny bit more at the bottom where it really cuts in. All along this side, it's much darker, just because of the angle. It looks a little wrong at the moment because there's a plant, like, there's a leaf there, but trust the process. There's one along this lip. And the whole bottom of this back lip is dark. As well as, oops, got some red in there. <laughs> my blue and I want to mix in a tiny bit of white. Not too much, just enough to differentiate it from the rest. And I'm gonna put that just in these areas where it's a bit lighter. So again along that curve in the middle and along the top of the ridge and the top here and just on the corner here there's a bit of a light reflection along the bottom there's nothing really on that side except for under there now I'm not going to make sure the lines are completely straight because this is my own masterpiece. It's just a bit of a rough thing. So I'm not going to worry too much about it being realistic. Now, I'm going to use some brown. Which I'm just going to squeeze out. And I'm going to put that just at the bottom of the pot where this little ceramic part that's exposed. It's gonna go just along there. There's a gap between two sort of feet. So here's the first one. And then we'll leave a gap. Do a second one. I'm also going to use this brown. Mix again with my dark colour for the depth. Now 
Now I'm just sort of tapping it on because I'm trying to simulate a slightly rougher texture. I'm just going over the leaves here because it's too difficult to leave those gaps. Again, I'm just going to tap a little bit. Just tap, 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 tap. To create that sort of bumpy texture. I'm not sure how apparent it is on the camera, but I'll show you at the end. Alright, now I'm a little impatient, so I'm just going to go ahead and make the leaves now. <laughs> leaves my rag. Just to get the excess water off of my paintbrush. I'm going to go in with green. So. Starting with this Thalo Green, which again I can't open. God, this one's really tough. Now this is very rich green. It's not quite the shade that these leaves are. They're quite bright, leafy green. <laughs> so I'm going to mix in some of this cadmium yellow. I think maybe even a little bit of white. So if you want a colour to be a little bit warmer, put some orange in there, some reds and yellow, and that'll do the trick. And also what I found is that if you want colours to be a bit more realistic, always dull them down a bit. Nothing is really that incredibly vibrant in real life, with a few exceptions of course. So I am putting just a bit of my dark shade in there, and some white, to sort of grey it out a little. I'm going to use that as a base colour for my leaves. So it looks like this. I'm just going to draw out the shape of the leaves again. So, yeah, one going down here. Again, I'm going to put a bit of water in there just to make those lines a bit cleaner. Now you're seeing what happens when you don't wait for things to dry, like me. <laughs> Blends a bit. There's another one right behind. Over here. That one goes down there. We do have a third. Going here. comes up and over. Right up here. Over. So the one down here. It goes just along there. You can see I've added a bit more white to this one. It goes all the way down. Um, 
let's do this one up here. Let's get some more paint. goes down here goes right out let's make that a bit darker it's a bit fatter this one has one going I'm gonna do the big huge one That little spike. This one up here. It's a bit thicker. Oh, there's one behind that. Goes all the way down. This one that goes that way and comes back down here. This one. Alright, so now we have some leaves, but they don't really mean anything yet. 
they're all just green. So, it's time to add some colour. For example, the stem is very white, so I'm going to add some white in there. Just at the base of all these leaves. And this white extends down the whole leaf. For example, this one has a stripe. This one. It's got a big old stripe right in the middle. Stripe along there. Stripe along there. This one, you can only just see it on the bottom. These are almost completely white. And you've got one going down here. see just a tiny bit on here goes all the way up this one I've done right now this back one has a big stripe let's do that one again I'm also going to add some darker greens where they're needed. So, for example, this leaf is darker than the ones down here as well. This one's quite dark. This one back here. Now, this one sort of curves. So it twists around here. Let's see, a little bit on the bottom of this one. Oh. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on this. So I'm going to finish this off with some shadows. So I'm using that original background colour. Just adding red, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. But I think I'm going to focus on it mainly being red and yellow, so it's a warm shadow. I'm just going to put that here. The shadow under this guy. Under this one. Got a whole bunch under here. This whole bit is shadow. There's one under there. Let's see what else? I can see some little shadows from up here. There's a bunch over here. <laughs> I guess the nearest light source is over there. So, a lot of this is in shadow. I'm just going to put a couple on there. <laughs> there. I'm going to call that done. <laughs> it's definitely not one of my best artworks, but... There's something that I did at a bit of an angle. <laughs> not too mad at it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Watching me do a little bit of painting. Definitely wasn't a professional job, but it was fun for me. And I hope it was fun for you too. I'll see you guys next time.